Heyo everybody, Haku here with my review for episode 7 of Hoseki no Kuni, or Land of the Lustrous. And uh, holy damn do I get hyped for this show every single week. Uh, it was exciting. I feel like we always learn so much about the culture and biology of this sort of new earth down a ways in the future. Um, and I just, I always, in I always love both, like getting to think about this new world and all the stuff we learn and all that, but also loving the actual plot and story that's going on itself. Like, there's so many layers to why I get so excited for this show every week. Um, also, before I get into this, throughout this, sorry if my voice cracks a little here and there. I have recorded some stuff before this, so uh, hopefully it won't crack or anything a bunch, but just saying, if it does, sorry about that. Uh, so either way, let's discuss this from the beginning. Amethyst gets repaired. I actually think, why'd they tie their hair back up in the weird thing? Because I actually think when it w just had the little one braid hanging down, I thought their hair looked cooler like that. But either way, uh, getting distracted. Amethyst is repaired. Um, I like how uh, Alexandrite prefers to be Alex Chen rather than Alex San and all that. And seems to be like... The way that the subs did it, in the way that the context of their conversation was, I kind of like the way it felt like... Because you know some of the rocks seem a lot more feminine, some seem a little more masculine. Um, I like to view them all as feminine though, of course, even though they are genderless. Um, except for the master. The master is very hard to view as feminine. He's the only one without a female voice actor too, I believe. Um, but it seems what I was actually getting to before I got distracted that Alexandrite prefers to be addressed in a more feminine way than masculine because uh, even the way the subs did it is what they were calling her like Alex San and she's like no Lexi Chan and that's the way that um, they changed the uh, sort of inflection with the subtitles or Alex no Lexi so I like that it made it seem like um, she was like no I want to be addressed in a more feminine way with my nickname. Um, Foss watches Cinnabar at the, uh, the beach and it starts to snow and all that. Uh, we cut from there to everyone, and I love just the, the scenes where they're all hanging out and we get just a bit into their, <laughs> their rock slice of life. A bit into their just everyday lives and what this world full of rock people is like for them on a daily basis. But, uh, they're covering the school, yeah, that's what they call it the uh, school with cloth so that they can hibernate um, and they say that during the winter they don't have very many sunny days winter hits hard wherever these rock people live but um, they said there's only around 10, 10 sunny days and each of those sunny days is a day that the Lunarians are probably going to attack also I, I find it very interesting to me that the Lunarians only attack during sunny days I think that's pretty interesting maybe it's because um, whatever sort of technology or biology even that they're using to fly in or whatnot, um, maybe whatever that is, is um, just not good at, even worse than our real life airplanes and whatnot that have trouble in inclement weather, maybe that even cloudy weather, <laughs> like not even that bad, is uh, bad for whatever sort of whatever sort of mess they have going on uh, that they use to fly in to do their attacks, the sunspots or whatever they call them. Um, and they say that those ten attacks are left every winter to master and Antarcticite, Antar Antarcticite, Antarcticite, uh, that's easier to say even if it's a bit of a mispronunciation. Uh, they say that Antarcticite is normally um, liquid but solidifies when cold. Uh, all the other rocks go to sleep, they all have very cute outfits and all that, and it's kind of a cultural thing for them. And I think it's cool seeing what what few literal, eh, what few little cultural things that they do is really cool to me. Um, but uh, Master then allows Foss to team with Antarcticite, and what is their tradition? Foss keeps joking around about her wanting to be alone with Master. But she tries to hug him, and other than that, what is the tradition? What do they do when everyone else is asleep? Um, uh, Foss then says that the reason she's doing this is because she's trying to test herself, and in a way it seems like she's trying to punish herself, because she says it's bothering her that she didn't get punished for not running away and all that. Um, and here, I'll give my argument, because a couple people said, why were you... Um, 
Why'd you think Bortz was a dick for yelling at Foss? Foss should have ran, ran away or something. She has those fancy legs. My argument for that is, as soon as this stuff happened, like, Bortz and the Master were there, like, instantly. And all the others, too. They were there, like, instantly, pretty much. Um, so Foss running away, they didn't need Foss to run away to go get their attention and bring them back. They didn't need Foss to run away for in for anything. They were already there. Foss lost them no time by not running away. So, um, yeah, there was literally nothing Foss could have done differently that would have made that situation go any differently. Unless Foss betrayed them and started fighting with the Lenarians. That's, that's the only thing that could have possibly if it, like changed the situation in any way. And even then, it would have not changed it very much at all because they would have just broken Foss apart. Um, but yeah, so I don't get it. But it seems like she's trying to punish herself. She's trying to test herself for sure. Uh, they get to these frozen ice flows and they're alive like um, they have bits of the stone within them. Bits of the, I guess, what are they? Inclusions, I think are what they're called. Um, and an artisite says that the master called them sinners once. So here's my theory on them. My theory is that you know, not all people are just good, so there's probably been bad rock people in the past. And what do you do with a bad person who's immortal to seal them away or whatever? So I feel like maybe what they did whenever there's a bad one, they just kind of crushed them up into little rock pieces and threw them out in the ocean. Like, that's sort of the only punishment I can guess for a bad rock person. And then maybe all those little pieces of bad rock people sort of froze together into these ice flows and uh, maybe this is our introduction to some sort of series antagonist. Uh, maybe this collection of evil rocks all fused together into the ice flows will end up being some sort of antagonist later on in the series, and there's just a hint toward that. Uh, but either way, I think it's really cool. Uh, and the landscape in general is just really beautiful. I love winterized landscapes. Um, and Artisite says that she breaks the ice... Um, she breaks the ice flows um, that are sliding so that they uh, don't make all that noise and uh, wake the others. And Artisite then trains Foss to use the sword and jump around on all the ice and all that. They have to do all the winter chores. <laughs> and one of the funniest winter chores is when they were like, sometimes they kind of sleepwalk or whatever. Just throw a sheet on them and they'll be all right. And we see just uh, like boards like up swinging around at the air. And, uh, and Artisite kind of like, I don't remember if she just, like, jumped past her and threw the sheet on her, or if she, like, d dive tackled her with the sheet or whatever. But it, I thought it was a really funny scene. Or then, uh, the master getting sleepy and running into a wall without noticing and falling asleep. And now Hard decides, like, I, I, I use a sheet for this, too, just in case, and throws a sheet on him. <laughs> and, um, just because, like, the sheet wouldn't do anything to the master from what we've seen, because he's too strong. But I thought it was funny. She's like, and, um, Foss is like, why? She's like, just in... Or Foss doesn't even ask why. She's like, oh, I use a sheet for this too. And then there's the moment of silence and she looks over at Foss and she's like, just in case. Um, so then when they're out there with the ice flows, Foss hears the voice. And <laughs> it led to one of the funniest scenes to me where she's like, and Artis like, can we go back? And Artis like, like, why? What are you slacking off for? And she's like, I think I've been out here too long. The ice is speaking to me. I just thought that was really funny. Um, but yeah, the living minerals, we get that explanation. They live in there, whatever. And they say, uh, hey, you'll get stronger if you, uh, lose your arms now, too. So then they steal Foss's arms. Uh, the ice, <laughs> the ice steals her arms. Uh, how lame do you have to be? Ice steals your arms. Poor Foss. Uh, but what's cool about this is I think Foss is probably going to get another upgrade of some sort. What's not cool about this is that, you know... Amnesia kind of sucks. It sucks when characters are constantly getting amnesia, uh, but this was really great development for Foss. She, presuming that she didn't forget all of it, <laughs> presuming she didn't just lose all of what she just learned from Antarctosite, she trained a bunch. She grew a lot. She said, you know, I want to test myself. She took that initiative. She learned more about courage and all that. Um, so it was really good continued development for Foss, but the amnesia just has me like, uh, I kind of wish she didn't have the amnesia either time because it makes her take all this development like when she learned all the stuff from uh, Jellyfish Lady, the king. Um, when she learned all that information and then just lost it, it kind of made me think, uh, we know that information as fans now, but I kind of wish that Foss had kept that development. 
Um, so it's kind of like a give and take. Three steps forward, but one step back. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, I also put in here about my theory. I already said it about the ice are probably the bad rocks or rock criminals from the past. Or just some evil amalgamation of little rock organisms that are going to end up being a bad guy somewhere down the line or something. Even if it's not like a traditional bland sort of bad guy. Um, just some some sort of antagonistic force. And I think that's really cool because even if it's not criminals or whatever, even if it is just organisms that haven't fused together completely into a person yet, that they're just suspended in the water, but then they freeze together each winter and sort of gain a bit of sentience. Oh, I just I spit. That's embarrassing. Um, but uh, um, if they do just gain a bit of sentience each winter, we could be seeing the birth of how one of the rock people form like all of these little bits of organism slowly coming together. Also, I find it weird. Does that mean that during the time when it's not winter, is Antarctica just liquid all the time and not really fully sentient? Because it seems like she's met Foss before, so there has to be some sort of overlap there where they where she meets the rest of them. Uh, and Foss is the youngest. But either way, moving along. Uh, I think that was it. Oh yeah, one last thing. What about Sapphire? Sapphire was part of that blade that they broke apart when they broke apart uh, Amethyst and they collected all the pieces to put Amethyst back together. So did they collect the Sapphire pieces? I mean, maybe it's not enough to completely put her back together, but, you know, it's something. Maybe they could try. Maybe they could get like a head or something and be like, okay, few more Lanarian attacks with whatever that weapon is. We'll get the rest of her back. Um, yeah, so what happened to Sapphire? But other than that, it's another great episode. I absolutely loved it. I had a ton of fun watching, and I'd give it nine talking ice flows out of ten. Um, just all the little things with uh, their outfits and uh, them hanging stuff up with Jade directing traffic and all that. All the little slice of life kind of things with them, I find so interesting. I don't know why. I love that. In addition to the big, overarching, more exciting plot, I find that little stuff so, so cool. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you once again for watching. 9 out of 10 for this. Like if you did like the video, comment down there to tell me what you thought of this episode, what you thought of my thoughts on it. Subscribe for more Jose no Kuni and Land of the Lustrous. Uh, tons of other anime, manga, light novels, many other things. Lots of things. Uh, follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel or talk to you there if you want. And if you want to link to our Discord server to talk with me and some of the rest of us there, uh, just ask and I'll give you a link to the Discord server. So that's it. Thank you once again for watching and I'll see you all next time.